Hello everyone, welcome back. And I'm gonna just do a quick um, mixing video to show you these beautiful colors in these sets. Just making sure my lighting is right. <clears throat> so, Color Art has two primary element sets that are available for a limited time. One of them is Firefly, which is a 12 piece set. The other one is Winter Lights. So I'm gonna mix them up and show them to you. I'm gonna separate them so I don't get them mixed up. I'm just gonna mix them up, show you the colors um, and what they look like. And so you get a little bit of a preview. And then of course, after I mix them up, they have to sit for a little bit before they can be used. So this is just gonna be a mixing video today. So uh, hang in there with me and I'll be showing you the colors shortly. Today I'm going to mix the colors in Vivid Enamel. Um, I do have a video where I explain the difference between Vivid Enamel and Polypore. Um, and I'll try to remember to link it below. But Vivid Enamel is just an untinted, sorry that's my dog, high gloss paint base. So these are dry paint systems. So they're not just mica, they have dry paint in them. So in order to use them you have to turn them into paint, right? That's kind of the idea. So in order to make these into paint, <clears throat> you have to mix them into something that has an acrylic binder. So this is specifically designed to make paint when you mix it this way. So I'm going to make these into paint first. From there, you can use them in various um, pouring recipes. But keep in mind, you shouldn't mix a pigment like this just into something like Floetrol and water. It's not gonna work. This needs an acrylic binder so it can become paint. When you mix tube paint, etc., cetera, and Floetrol and water, it already has a binder because it's already been made into paint. So first you need to make this into paint. So if you use the Vivid Enamel and make it into paint, you can thin it with a little bit of water if you need, a little pouring medium if you need. I don't recommend high amounts of Floetrol. A little bit would be okay, but I would not use a high amount because it Floetrol has no binders in it, and it will break apart pigments. That would be true of pretty much any pigment. Um, you can use gel gloss and water. You can use pouring medium. Um, you can use a little bit of Floetrol, but I wouldn't use a lot. So that's just to give me an idea. Um, Polypore is Color Arts pouring medium. So it is an untinted paint base, similar to this, but it has varnish added, and it's kind of a good consistency so you can mix this up on its own and make paint this way and then it's a little bit more ready to pour. You can thin down with a little water if you need, um, but in your sets you get one of each. So I just wanted you to know what the difference is. I do a lot of blooms, so I'm going to mix them into Vivid Enamel and then I'm going to add a little Joe Sonia gloss varnish until I get the bloom consistency that I want. I will say in a previous video I shared um, that I would use so many parts of this to so many parts of the gloss varnish. I find I need less of the varnish when I use something like this um, because if you use too much varnish, your mix can be too thin. So just be careful with that. But if you get it too thin, you can thicken it up with a little bit of uh, golden gel gloss. If you mix it with this for blooms, you don't need to add anything to it. So since a lot of you who follow my channel follow the bloom recipe, just wanna let you know. You can also mix these right into whatever your normal pouring medium is for blooms because um, the bloom recipe uses an untinted house paint in the paint base, which is kind of what an untinted enamel is, right? So um, you can use it, if you're doing blooms, you can kind of use this really in a very versatile way. But because a lot of people don't know what to do with what they get with their sets, I wanted to show you how you can use what it comes with so you can mix it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the little bit of the Vivid Enamel in these little, I think these are two ounce little condiment cups. I like to put part of the mixture in first versus putting the pigment in first because if you put the pigment in first then you have to scrape it out of all these little spaces. So I like to put a little bit in first, get the color saturation I want, and then add more if I need. So. That's what I'm going to do, and then I'll show you the colors. All right, so this first color is called Sweet Thistle. So 
One thing to note, because these are not mixed, they're not just mica, they're also dry paint. What you see in your container will sometimes look a little bit different than it does mixed up. So I always dot, dot the top so I know exactly what the color looks like mixed up. So when I go to make future colors, I know exactly what I'm looking for. Look at the beautiful shimmer. Now for the sake of time, I'm only going to do one with this much detail. Um, and I may actually speed up the rest of them so you can see me mix them all. But they come with these cute little shovel spoons. So I have a little bit of Vivid Enamel right here. I'm just going to get a decent size because I like a lot of color saturation. Now, these are very fine particles, so I would not leave it open like that. You could sneeze and blow that stuff all over the place. But look at this beautiful color. Now, I'm going to need to add more Vivid Enamel to this, but I wanted you to see the color mixed up. And the Vivid Enamel is really nice. It's a high gloss on tinted paint, paint base, so it's very glossy. The colors stay very vivid. It's a nice product. But I just wanted you to know all the ways that you can mix them, especially for blooms, because I know a lot of you guys ask how I mix them for blooms. Because you can um, buy those two um, products, the Vivid Enamel and the Polypore, in larger sizes if you just really enjoy using them. They're really nice products for color art. But I just don't want you to feel limited and not know how to use your products, you know? But look at this beautiful color. Ooh, I need to screw this lid back on, you guys. I don't trust myself. So Sweet Thistle. Look at that. All right, now obviously that's kind of thick, right? So we're going to add a little bit more of the Vivid Enamel. And then I'm going to put a little bit of gloss varnish in to kind of show you what I would be looking for for a bloom consistency. And the rest, I'm just going to show you the colors because I don't want to bore you with, I mean, we're going to be mixing 24 pigments, so it needs to be kind of fast. Now, if I still wanted more color saturation from there, I could add a little bit more pigment and it would be fine. So this is a little thick for blooms at this point, but it's not far. Like I could bloom with that the way it is. It's not too far, but it's still a little thick. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple drops of Josonia in here until we thin it down just a little bit. So I buy this directly from Josonia. You can get smaller bottles on Blick, and I have a link for Blick below. Um, but if you buy directly from Josonia and you spend enough, you get free shipping anyway. And this is a, um, how many ounces? It's a big bottle. I think it's a 32 ounce bottle. Um... 30, yeah, 32 ounce bottle instead of the 8 ounce bottle I get online at Blick, so it's a lot cheaper. So we're going to start off with just that much, because in the past I have I have put too much in there and made it too thin. And if your paints are too thin for blooms, um, they can make, especially if they're too thin and very glossy, because this is a high gloss base and a high gloss varnish. Um, sometimes as things dry, your cells will wiggle, so I don't like that. So this is not a bad consistency. You see how it leaves kind of a little trace? So I'm going to probably, now it'll probably thicken up a little bit as it dries, or not as it dries, as it sits. So I might add just a touch more, but I'm not going to add much more than that. because I can always thin it down if it's too thick when I want to use it with a little varnish, but I'm thickening, it, thickening it up is a lot more work. So, super pretty, right? So that's about, that's about right. A little bit thicker or a little bit thinner would be okay. Much thinner would be too thin. So, this is Sweet Thistle, and I put a little dot on the top, so when this dries, when I go to use it, I'll know exactly what it looks like, because you can see it's a little bit um, bluer mixed up than it is here. So, 
All right, so there's one. The rest I'm gonna mix up and just show you the colors because we have 24 colors and we're already 10 minutes in. All right, next color is called Northern Lights. Super beautiful. I already put the dot on the top. Let me show you the color mixed up. This does not have any varnish or Josonia or whatever in it, but look at this color. The color shift is amazing. It has like a blue-violet shift to it and it's a beautiful teal color. It is truly a gorgeous color. This light is a little bit too close. So that is Northern Lights. So, and the cool thing about these little spoons is you can wipe that paint right off and reuse them. And they're great because these little sharp edges help you get to the bottom of the container, it's get all of the particles mixed in very nicely. Next up is Azurite, Azurite. It's a really beautiful, deep, rich blue. Look at that. It's really beautiful. Gorgeous color. Next up is Midori Melon. Beautiful green. Super pretty color. Beautiful color. Next up is Caribbean Mist. This one is actually pretty true to color um, when you look at the container, but look at that sparkle. It is beautiful. I feel like my ring light's a little too close. Look at that. You can see how um, brilliant the colors stay with the Vivid Enamel. All right, next up is called Ruby Red, and this is a really beautiful red. Look at that. It's a rich, beautiful red. Perfect for this time of year. Look at that. So beautiful. All right, next up is sea glass. This one's very sparkly, you can tell, because the particulates are bigger. <clears throat> it's a really pretty frosty green. What's fun about primary elements, too, is if you wanted to, <clears throat> you can combine them and kind of make your own custom color. So, like, if you wanted to make this, like, a more green blue or blue green you could add a little bit of that caribbean mist and then you'd have a whole new color beautiful right look at that all right this one is called desert clay and this is an example where when you mix them up they're a little different so it's this beautiful deep reddish bronze brown but because the particulates are different colors in here it doesn't look the same until you mix it up. But you can see the in the right light, you can see the red shift. It's really a very beautiful color. I can't wait to see it. So let me show you. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's a very rich color. Color art has some of the most beautiful warm browns. Look at that. All right. I need to hurry up, I'm going too slow. All right, now this color, my camera's going crazy, is called Black Orchid. And I can already tell you I love it very much. Now if you have watched a while, you know I love like the wine and roses and the va boom red and all of the wine or burgundy colors. And this is a gorgeous color. Can't wait to see that one in action. Beautiful color. Look at that. Now you see all these bubbles when we stir? This is why you mix up your paints and let them sit before you pour. Because pigments need to settle a little bit. Look at that. Whew, don't forget you guys. Save 20% on anything from the Color Art website with my code Mandy1120. Both of these sets are available for a limited time, so don't forget. Okay, so this is pink 
anthurium. And you can see how it's kind of like a watermelon pink. So mixed up, it's definitely a little bit more watermelon, which is great. I think this is a beautiful color. So let me show you. But this is why I've dot the top of the container. This is a fantastic color. I love it. It is beautiful. So I am digging this color. So pink and thurium. We have two more colors from this set and then we'll move quickly through the other one. All right, next up is daffodil. It's a beautiful sunshine type yellow. It's really beautiful, let me show you. Look at this. And it's got a nice gold tint. It is, oh, I'm just not in the camera. It's so beautiful, look at that. So beautiful. Can't wait to use this one. All right, this one here, last but not least, is Douglas Fir. So you can see mixed up, this one looks a little bluer, right? And this looks a little greener. That means there's a blue shift in here, which you can see at the right angle. You see how when the light hits it, it's blue? Blue shifty, super cool. Look at that, it's a beautiful, rich color. All right, next up, we're gonna go through the 12 Winter Lights colors relatively quickly. And don't forget about the discount codes in the description box below. Beautiful. All right, so this is the Winter Lights set. This is Twilight. Beautiful color. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, this color is called Mystique. And I love it. Well, look at this. It's got like a violet shift. Super beautiful. I think it is gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna speed things up for the sake of time. This is raspberry wine. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Beautiful, beautiful color. This is Sunset Glow. It's a gorgeous color. It's like a coral with a red pink shift. It's beautiful. Sorry, I realize you can see the things I have down here. But look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. This next color is called Moonbeams. Beautiful, like icy, frosty, well, it's like a blue-violet color. Very sparkly, beautiful, beautiful color. This one is Vintage Mint. Look at that. Gorgeous. All right, this is one that looks a little different mixed up. So this is Jasper Red. See how it looks more brown, but mixed up, it's a lot more vibrant red. So I wanted to show you the powder on that one. Look at that. Gorgeous. Beautiful. All right, this is green tea. Another one that looks lighter here, but darker mixed up. So beautiful, rich color. Look at that. It's kind of deep, like a black emerald green, but no blue. It's just a strong, like, tea green. It's really pretty. This one is called Black Cherry. Beautiful color. It's kind of like a plumish cherry. Beautiful. This one is called Tanzanite. It's a gorgeous color and it has a beautiful violet shift. Beautiful, beautiful color. Tanzanite. All right. This is Bougainvillea. It's a beautiful like hot pink with a blue shift. <clears throat> Similar to the color you would see on an actual ooh, Bougainvillea flower. I used to have a Bougainvillea that I named Max. That's a useless fact for you guys. He died. R.I.P. Max. Last but not least, coming up, 
And just in case you're concerned about my well-being, I don't usually name plants, but bought him at a like a market day. He was a cute little guy, so I named him for fun. He grew into a, a grown-up, but then he died. Poor Max. All right, this is Mango Freeze. Last but not least. So I'm going to list all of the colors in each set in the description box. So if you are trying to maybe narrow it down from the two sets into one, you can do that. Um, like I said, let me know what you think of the colors below. Don't forget to use my code and save 20%. And that applies to not just these, but anything on the site. So Prism Pour colors, resin art colors. Um, they're beautiful. So can't wait to see what you guys make. And um, let me know what you think below. Was this helpful for you? I always like to see the colors mixed up. So pretty. Anyway, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.